And it'll be a lot on your outer shoulders. Hi, Susan. If you've got two blocks, grab your two blocks and we're starting on our bellies with your arms, basically cross over each other and then walking your fingers away. So you're gonna feel your shoulder blades move away from each other in opposite directions. So just like so, and then wherever you want your head to rest. And so make sure your neck feels comfortable and supported. So if your chin straight down doesn't feel quite right or turning your head to the side doesn't feel quite right, just take some moments to maybe move your head around a little bit to find that sweet, sustainable spot. And just breathe into that opening, the back of your shoulders, the top of your shoulders. A little bit onto the sides of your upper arms. Try not to clench your glutes here. So let your glutes relax. And instead of allowing your brain to attach all to the sensations of your shoulders, start to recognize the sensation of your belly as you breathe in and out. You can feel your belly push into the ground as you inhale. And a little bit of relaxing away from the floor as you exhale. Go ahead and transition your breath all in and out of your nose, but not necessarily ujjayi. Just a soft breath in and out. Know that you can always lessen this sensation by lifting your chest up and putting a little bit of support on your elbows if this starts to feel like too much. Three more breaths here. On your next inhale, start to put that support onto your elbows as you walk your elbows into a sphinx pose. So right underneath your shoulders with your fingers forward and your chest up. Just let a little bit of that stretching sensation dissipate before moving to the other side. You might feel it more in one shoulder than the other. And then go ahead and switch opposite elbow on top, walking your fingers away from each other and your neck might need to be in a different position. And side, chin, just as long as you can breathe. Releasing your glutes. And softly breathing both in and out of your nose. Allowing your belly to press into the earth as you inhale and soften away from the floor as you exhale. Notice the change in sensation in your shoulders. Which shoulder may feel it a little more and which may feel it just a little bit less.
Slow down the rate of your breath. Last three inhales and exhales here. Calmly and softly in and out through your nose. Working your way back into Sphinx Pose. No hurry. Be gentle to your shoulders as your elbows stack right underneath your shoulder joints. A little bit of push into the floor. A little bit of pull back with your elbows. And then slowly drop the weight of your head, chin towards your chest, but your shoulders are staying bright and open. And then you're gonna turn your head over to the left side, chin back to chest, and then turn your head over to the right side. So your shoulders are collapsing. You still have all that sphinx energy. You're just letting a little bit of release happen you're basically making a U shape with your chin side to side. One more each way. Good, as you come back to center, take your right fingertips and you're gonna point them towards the long edge of your mat. So you're on your right forearm. So it might be towards the screen, it might be away from the screen, and then bend your left knee. Reach back with your left hand on the big toe side of your foot and just gently start to bring your heel towards your bum, a little bit of push of your right elbow into the floor and start to resist your foot into your hand. So you're opening up through the front of your left shoulder and the front of your left thigh. Keeping your right shoulder super stable and if you look down and your right elbow is really ahead of your shoulder, come out of the pose, pull your elbow right under your shoulder and then come back into it, heel towards your bum, and a little resistance of your foot into your hand. Just three more breaths here. Try to have your heart just a little bit higher. Nice. Take it slow as you release your foot and your hand. Bring your left forearm down. Good time to look right at your elbow. Put it directly underneath your left shoulder and to the right side. Bend your right knee. Reach around for the big toe side of your foot. Heel towards your bum. But a contrasting resistance of your foot into your hand. So you really start to tap into your quad. and trusting your left forearm to support you and hold you. But also remembering both of your thighs are on the ground, so you should feel that stable support in those two points as well. Check where your elbow is, and then take three to four final breaths. Slowly release on an exhale. Bring yourself all the way onto your belly with your arms by your side, palms facing down, forehead touching the floor. And just lift everything except your palms and pelvis an inch. So your chest, your legs, and then exhale down. Inhale an inch. Exhale to the floor. Do this a few times. Still feeling grounded in your hips and hands. No need to go really high right now or ever. You will start to feel your glutes kick in. Take three more on your own.
And on your third one, stay in the lifted position. So you'll feel your glutes naturally kick in. Now you have to find that extra hug of your shoulder blades towards one another, like you're trying to hold a tic-tac between your shoulder blades. Look straight at the floor. If it starts to feel like too much on your lower back, just come back to the ground. If you can take two more breaths, take them. Lower on your exhale. Take one side of your face to the floor, breathe out. <sighs> Sweep your right arm all the way up to a 45 degree angle. So at a diagonal. Yep, so not straight out from your shoulder, a little higher. Left hand right next to your left armpit. So elbow up towards the ceiling like you were gonna take a cobra with your left hand. Lift your left leg up. Bend at your knee and start to take your left foot behind you, moving into a twist. Slow, 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 just to the point where it's enough. Front of your shoulder, pec space. Let your right ear come down to the ground and your foot does not need to touch the floor. It can be up in the air. Reach your right fingers away from your mat. Keep your jaw and face as relaxed as you can. Unravel this twist on your belly on an inhale. Start with your leg first, leg down, bring your right hand in and take it to the left side, up to that 45 degree angle. Lift your right leg, bend. Start to slowly, right? You don't wanna miss that magic spot for your body. So you have to really take the twist slowly and you might notice that, oh no, my foot doesn't need to touch the ground. Just breathing into this twist for your spine's sake. Reach your left fingers away from the mat. Again, feeling the front of your chest, your pecs. Take your time to unravel back onto your belly on an inhale. Both hands in towards your armpits, cobra three times, just your upper body up on your inhale, down on your exhale. Even bring your elbows all the way in towards your waist, so really hug them in. After your last one, come down. Move yourself into tabletop all fours. Take the right long edge of your mat, fold it in so you have a little bit more cushion for your right knee as you come into a low runner's lunge with your left foot forward. So take all the time you need to come into this. Yeah, blankets great too. Low runner's lunge, left foot forward. Blocks are great, I love it, I love it. So upright and starting in a twist, take your right arm across your body and your left hand to your hip and just turn your head. Take this low lunge twist. Excellent. Make more space between the top of your shoulders and your ears. Feeling the sensation of the twist as you exhale. Unravel your twist on an inhale. Both hands down to the inside of your left foot. You can walk it a little bit wider and just let the weight of your hips move towards the ground a little bit. So you have your hands to the floor, your hands to the blocks, just feeling the weight of your pelvis and hips come down towards the ground. So it's more of that stretching sensation in the front of your right hip and quad. You might want to scoot your right knee farther back. So your right thigh is more at a diagonal rather than like this and perpendicular to the floor. So you're just starting to move your thighs in that diagonal shape. Couple more breaths. As you breathe into the sensations of your lower body, extend out through the top of your head and your spine still. 
Last breath. Good, give a little shift into a half split just for a moment, enough where you can release your blanket or the long edge of your mat. And then you're gonna walk it forward, take a 180 so you come through wide-legged forward fold, turning to the back edge of your mat and setting up your left knee with some cushion, with your blocks, with the foundation of your feet. So you're gonna come up, got it, low lunge with a twist, left arm across. I like the back of the wrist, the top of the wrist, so your palm is facing forward and then turning your head to look over your right shoulder. Never yanking at yourself in a twist. I know you guys know that, but just a friendly reminder, twist as you exhale. Should also feel a little bit of sensation of length in the left side of your neck. As you look over your right shoulder, Doing your best to always unwind a twist as you inhale, hands down on the inside of your right foot. And again, right, so this lunge where your thigh is more perpendicular and parallel to the floor is just gonna be less lengthening on your muscles. So you wanna try to let your hips come down and your thighs are making that diagonal line. Blocks, hands, fists, hands on a chair, anything you got. Starting to breathe into the front of your left hip, all the way down to where your quad comes close to your knee. Notice if you tap into ujjayi breath, so it's that stronger breath in and out through your nose. You don't have to, you can just breathe naturally in and out through your nose. Just kind of retraining yourself to not mouth breathe as much. When you're ready, a small moment in Ardha Hanuman half splits, shifting back, breathing into your hamstring. We're gonna stay facing this direction this time. So you can just simply sweep your right knee back, set any props off to the side, or if you need that extra cushion in the middle of your mat, you can just do a little fold, set your kneecaps there as you come into tabletop all fours. Hips to the left, gaze to the right, look at your right foot, and then come through cat stretch. So come through the middle, round your back, tuck your chin, hips over to the right, look back for your left foot, and then do that again, through center and cat pose, tuck your chin, hips to the right, turn your head, or excuse me, hips to the left, head to the right, cat stretch, hips right, look left, and then one more time, center cat pose, hips left, look right, and then come to the center. Now, if you do have that fold in the middle of your mat, go ahead and release it. Step your right foot up as far over so the pinky toe side of your foot is literally on the edge of your mat. Left toes tuck, and I literally want your left pinky toe on that very far edge of your left long side of your mat. So you're going to lift your knee and slowly come up into a super wide base runner's lunge. Mm -hmm. Back heel is up. Hands on your hips and just start to swivel your hips a little bit so you can go a little bit open, a little bit closed. And then as you find a little bit more of that forward action with your hips, just check in with your right foot and knee that they're in that pretty similar direction. And then we're all gonna turn the right foot out to a 45 and your knee is going to follow and it's going to make you wobble just a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. So you're still in that really wide base. Breathe in. Exhale, hands come down to the floor, to the block, to the blocks on the inside of your right foot. 
You can walk your right foot even wider and start to turn your foot and knee out even wider. Yep. So you're still in that lunging shape. You just turned your right foot and knee out to the side. Kind of feels like a lizard lunge, but your back knee is lifted. One more breath in. Exhale, turn your right foot and knee forward, and you're gonna walk your right foot to center, walk your left foot to center, and put yourself on a tight rope, like the tightest rope you can. And then you come back up. So stabilizing and strengthening in this lunge. Arms come out and reach up. And then using a little bit more of your inner thighs, squeeze your inner thighs, feel your hips lift just a tiny bit, and then exhale, relax that effort. So you feel your inner thighs and your left hip squeezing forward, and then relax that effort. One more time. Good. Your next exhale, hands down towards the floor or blocks. Step your left foot up and find your forward fold. And you're going to feel unevenness between your right and left legs. And that's okay. Bend your knees so you're in a little bit more of a relaxed state in your forward fold. And then getting ready to do all of that in the reverse order with your left foot forward and your right leg back. So tightrope first. Slowly press into your left foot and the ball of your right foot as you come up. Arms out and up, high runner's lunge. Make sure your back heel is up. Otherwise, you're in warrior one. Yeah, nice everybody. Always reminding yourself to breathe. And then engaging your inner thigh muscles. So you'll feel your right hip squeeze forward, inner thighs together, hips up, and then relax that effort. And it's pretty subtle. Your inner thigh squeezing towards the middle. And then exhale, relaxing. One more. Breathe in. Exhale, hands down to the floor or the blocks. Bring your hands or blocks to the inside of your left foot as you walk the left edge of your foot really wide. And step your right foot wide, like you're on the outside of railroad tracks. And then slowly start to bring yourself up, hands to your hips, and just a little swivel open and closed. Just a little bit, maybe an inch at the most. Yeah. And then come to center, trust your balance as you gently turn your left foot out, just to a 45 with your knee in the same way. Mm -hmm. Still upright, breathe in. Exhale, hands come down. So you're in that semi lizard lunge. You can walk your left foot wider, turn your toes and your knee out even more. Just make sure you feel stable with your arms and your back leg. So you're taking up a lot of space in this lizard. We'll call it the lifted lizard. Reacquaint yourself with your breath and the length of your spine. Nice, everybody. So we're finding that intersection, sometimes a stretching sensation, sometimes a strengthening, stabilizing sensation. Last breath in. Exhale, start to walk your left foot forward, knees and toes, and you're gonna take your right foot in a little bit so you can come through wide-legged. So take a little 90 degree turn. Mm -hmm. Toes slightly point in, ankles point out. And then exhale, let yourself come into a forward fold, interlacing your fingers at your lower back. Stretching your knuckles up towards the ceiling, shoulder blades holding that tic-tac. And then tucking your chin as you put a little bit more weight onto the balls of your feet. And for a moment, feel like you're gonna stretch the mat out. So you're pushing through the baby toe sides of your feet. 
and then do the opposite action. Feel like you're going to pull the mat into wrinkle right underneath your head. And then relax all of that. Release your hands underneath your shoulders. Inhale, come up halfway. And exhale, forward fold. Turn over towards your right foot. So you're coming into a runner's lunge with your right foot forward, left knee down. And again, always an option. You can break the shape, fold the mat, use your blanket, low runner's lunge towards your right foot. Yeah. Interlacing your fingers back behind you. Knuckles go down. Watch if you have a tendency to puff your chest and get extreme into your lower back. It's about your shoulders, not getting yourself out of alignment. Good, just a little bit press forward with your hips, keeping your belly in towards your back. And then listen carefully, take the back of your right hand to your outer left rib, left elbow pointed out to the side. So your hands are still interlaced. So come from that interlace behind you, back of your right hand to your outer left rib, and then turn your head over to your right shoulder. You can stay right here or slightly take your right ear towards your right shoulder. Couple breaths. Now feeling stabilizing in your legs as you take some breaths into your left side of your neck and shoulder. Good, inhale, slowly bring your head up. Release your hands, take that momentary half splits, blocks your fingertips to the floor. Just so we give the back of the leg a little bit of attention. And then you can choose how to get to the other side. You can simply switch, bring your right knee in, or you can go 180 to the back of your mat to the other side, just to get into your other lunge. Doesn't matter to me how you get there. You choose. Low lunge, left foot forward. Shoulders up, taking the interlace with your opposite index finger and switching the cross of your thumbs, pulling your knuckles down, keeping your front body a little in towards your back body, then taking the back of your left hand to your outer right ribs, so your right elbow points out to the side, and then turning your head to look over your left shoulder. Staying right here or Slowly dipping your head a little bit to the left. Ooh, feel kind of that tingly sensation cascade down the right side of your neck and shoulder. You might even slightly tip your chin in, so experiment with the angle of your neck. Move your jaw around, your nose. One more breath in. Exhale, release your hands. Ardha Hanuman half splits, heart up, exhale. Good, bringing your left knee back. You're gonna take a moment to sit in what's called Vajrasana. So your feet are together and it's not hero's pose, it's a little different. You just sit straight back on your heels instead of your bum between your feet. If that's too much on the front of your knees, you can take a block or a blanket between your heels and your bum. The block's a little hard, obviously, but if it's fine for you, you can do it. Or you can sit straight back. Take your shoulders up to your ears, squeeze them on your back and down. And do that two more times. Up, back, and down. One more. You can just take a moment to pause and sit. Maybe you close your eyes so you can really concentrate on breathing fully into all corners of your body.
all what I call panels of your body, your front panel, back panel of your body, those smaller rectangular side panels of your body. Just one more breath. Open your eyes if they're closed. Coming forward out of this pose, taking a leaning forward lunge. So it might be helpful to have your blocks at the top just in case you'd like them. Right foot steps up, left leg goes back. So you're gonna stay in a 45 degree angle with your upper body. Hands on your right thigh. And please take this slowly. As you move your hands to your hips, bend your back knee. You'll step up with your left foot, step back with your right foot. And it doesn't have to be one step. It can be multiple. And then you'll repeat. A little bend into your back knee. Maybe try two steps, see that feels more stable. And then switch. And you don't need to step all the way in the chair. You can keep your feet separated as you step, so it's a little bit easier to distribute your weight. So this is what we're gonna do for a good little bit. So however many steps up you need, and you can also take multiple steps back. Torso is leaning forward the whole time. Really learning your own footing. If you have a tendency to kind of cave onto one side of the foot, maybe the baby toe side or the big toe side, just helping you establish balance and what's called proprioception, the bottoms of your feet in a little different way. Maybe after you do multiple steps, maybe you take a step out or maybe you notice that you need to add a step in. Just a few more. You can also try your hands in your imaginary back pockets for a little bit more hug of your shoulder blades together as you move in and out of your lunges. Whichever foot is in front, that knee is gonna stay bent the whole time. So you put the effort in your muscles and not your ligaments. Go ahead and take two more on each foot. Maybe you start to take smaller steps, bigger steps. Again, just some kind of little change. And then after you've taken those two more on each side, you'll just come into a simple mountain pose. Feet under your hips, palms forward. Big exhale out of your mouth. Full breath in through your nose. And another exhale out of your mouth. Good, just one more. Wherever you're at, keeping your left foot at the top, stepping your right leg back, leaning forward again, hands to your heart, getting ready for a twist. Now there's options. You can cross your right arm in front and take this leaning twisted lunge, or you can take your hands into prayer with your right elbow towards the outside of your left knee. Yeah, so a twist towards your front knee. You guys got it. Always remember there's permission to take your back knee down. But as we did earlier, I want you to feel that squeeze of your inner thighs towards your middle. You might even feel your back heel lift up a little higher. And then you can focus on rotating from your belly button on your exhale. So we're in this for a good little bit. Your twisted runner's lunge. Good. 
Can you put a little bit more energy into your back leg? So not all your weight is in your left foot. Maybe it's the time you need to gently bring your right knee down to the floor. Changing your point of view, so starting to turn your head a little higher up towards the ceiling. And then staying in a twist, it's just a little different variation. Right hand down to the floor, to the block, left arm up and open. Get back knee up, back knee down, either or. But now that you have your right hand to the floor, it should take a little bit of the strength down to stabilize your shoulder. A little less pressure on your legs. Last breath or two. Again, releasing your twists on an inhale, taking a 180 turn to get to the other side. So your right foot is forward, your left leg is back, and moving into your twist. So ultimately, you're still at a 45 with your torso. You can reach your left arm forward and just hold it there. You can bring your hands to your chest. Lots of options. And there is that balancing element to a runner's lunge. So that's where it helps to find a little bit of a hug of your left hip forward, inner thighs towards one another. So your legs are a bit more stable and you're not rotating at your hips, you're rotating right at your belly button. Yeah. Couple more breaths. Think about reaching the very top of your head where your wall and ceiling meet. Reach, 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 reach. And I want you to find the point where it feels even before you take the second variation of the twist. So if you're ready to put your left hand down and take it there, or if you know, oh, I need another breath or two, just want you to feel pretty even side to side before going into that second variation of a twisted lunge. But you should feel a little bit more balanced now that you have three points of contact to the floor, two feet and a hand, or maybe it's four, two feet, one knee, one hand. Starting to turn your gaze up towards your right thumb. Still notice if you're twisting at your hips, try to get a little bit more established in your feet and just rotate from your belly button. Last two breaths. Release on an inhale. Step back to downward dog. First one. Woo. Knees bent, arms straight. Your head is heavy. And notice what it's like to have gone this far in a practice and to now take your first downward dog. What maybe feels the same? What maybe feels different for you? And then move into your child's pose with some support underneath your forehead, hands, forearms, blanket or block. Widening your knees. I'm just breathing slowly. Letting your legs have a break from all that effort of staying upright in your lunges. You can always lift your hips up a little higher to relieve some pressure on your knees.
open your mouth. Relax your tongue. And slowly come into your tabletop. Knees in, right underneath your hips. Make sure you've got enough room. We're going to take a twist and then do a little bit of a fun balance. So your right hand stays down. Your left arm reaches up. And if you can't see the screen and you want to watch for this first one, you can. You're going to thread your left arm underneath. So you come onto your left ear. Start to walk your right arm forward. So your right arm is forward. Mm -hmm. You're going to start to extend your right leg back. So your left knee, your left shoulder, and your right hand are supporting you on the ground. Yep, you guys got it. And you have to trust those points so you can lift your right leg up. Woo. Different way to balance. So your right foot can lift an inch, a centimeter, two inches, three inches, a foot, two feet. Yeah, nice. Very slowly, bring your right toes down. Boom. Then your right knee. Unravel the twist. Right hand in front of your face. A little push into your right palm. Open up, open twist, excellent job. And then your left hand down to the right side. Reach up, lean back, exhale, twist. So you're threading your right arm underneath. Starting to walk your left hand forward. And again, your left hand, your right shoulder, and your right knee stay on the ground. You just tuck your left leg, left toes, Left leg behind, and then again, feel those points stable on the floor. You can then start to lift your left leg as much, as little, or somewhere that just feels like you can stabilize. And just balance in a different way. Last two breaths. Slowly left toes down. Your left knee. Bring your left hand in. And then unravel your twist. Reach, 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 reach. And then exhale, both hands down. Sit to one side. Bring yourself into a 90 degree angle with your legs. You can sit on a block, although that might be kind of hard on your tush. You can also sit on a blanket or a pillow. So just sitting upright. Yep, take your time, get what you need. You can walk your hands forward. Feeling your sits bones on whatever you're sitting on. And we're not going massively forward, just a small lean. Oh, I love it when doggies join. Join, join the yoga. Now take your left hand to your right thigh. So you're crossing in front of you and you're gonna lean up and over towards your left leg. Ooh, and just feel your side body. Inhale, come up and just take it into a twist. Your left arm behind you. Still establishing your seat. You're just twisting away from your legs. And then use an inhale, left arm up and over, back over to the side. And then breathe in, come up and switch. Take your right hand to your left side, your left arm up and over. And instead of trying to go for your leg, just think about reaching out from your left fingers all the way to feeling your left sits bone on the floor. 
Let it inhale, bring you upright and take it into your twist. So you're twisting towards your left leg, away from your right leg. A little taller on your in-breath. And then exhale up and over back to the same side, leaning towards your right leg. Good, inhale, come up. Take your hands to your outer thighs or the backs of your knees to lift, bring them together. And this is a good space as you come onto your back to have a block. We're gonna do runner's lunge on our backs. So as you come down, you can totally do this without a block, but just like you would take a restorative bridge, put the block on its lowest height right underneath your sacrum. And you're gonna get a little bit of that element of upside down mountain. So your left leg goes straight and your right leg is gonna come into a lunge. So you're in a lunge on your back with the right bottom of your foot up towards the ceiling. And you might need to lift your left shoulder off the ground, hands behind your knees, hugging your right knee towards your right armpit. Kinda feels like happy baby, but when you think about the shape, I want you to think about, oh, it's like I'm lunging on the ceiling. So some of us, our heels are dropping towards the ground. I want you to try to take the bottom of your foot up towards the ceiling. Yeah, there you go. Nestle the back of your skull onto the floor and then push a little energy out through your left heel. So again, you feel it in the front of your left hip and trickling that sensation down to your left thigh. Last two breaths. Release your hands from your right knee. Just let your right foot come to the floor. Take a moment. And then switch. Left knee bends, right leg extends out. Runner's lunge on your back. And if the block feels bothersome, slowly remove it and just do this fully on your back body. So again, ultimately, just trying to pull your toes a little closer to your face so you can balance an imaginary block on your left foot or as if you're gonna make a footprint on your ceiling. Don't forget about your right leg. Press, press, press. Feel like your leg is extending even farther out than your right heel. Try to be soft in your face and shoulders. There's a lot happening here. Lunging on your back. Last two breaths. When you're finished with that, release your hands from your knee, left foot down. Pause. Bend your right knee, right foot down, and boom, you're right into restorative bridge. Wonderful place to stay, or take it active. Remove the block, press into your feet, especially if you need the neck and shoulders to be more spacious. Take your active bridge. Five or so breaths in either one. Remember all panels of your body, your torso, trying to stretch your breath into every space. And if you're in active bridge, start to move your way down. If you're in restorative bridge, push into your feet, set your block off to the side, peel your spine back to the ground. And then just because we can all use a little hips, soles of your feet together, some moments in butterfly. 
maybe with a slight, not a bouncing, but a rocking from glute to glute. So you let one knee come a little closer to the floor, one knee lifts up. Just massaging your outer glutes, letting your hips soften. Good, and then you can just let yourself settle into butterfly. Hands resting anywhere on your body or the floor. Notice the texture of the soles of your feet touching each other. Very gently reach your hands down to your thighs. Bring your knees together. Lift your feet off the floor. Give yourself a squeeze on your back, wide or close knees. And then just start to make some circles on your lower spine. Massaging one direction to the other direction. And then from this space, take anything else your body's asking for before you come into Shavasana. So if you need to go upside down, you need a twist, you need another bridge, go for it. There's no right or wrong answer here. Just set yourself up for what you need for the rest of the day. Maybe a little bit more calm. Maybe that feeling of coziness. Start to loosen the grip on your breath. Enjoy your body just sinking farther into your mat and your floor. Taking a full five minutes of quiet and rest.
start to come back with a soft breath. Maybe a clarity of how you want your day to go today. sense of calm and clarity, and a little bit of movement, feeling the temperature or texture of your skin, and to move just a tiny bit more as you reach, stretch, and lengthen into your body. to hug your knees in. You might not even use your arms. Just bring them in towards your chest, rolling up to either side. And then coming up to sit. Hands together. Feeling your heart a little higher than your fingertips. Again, just allowing yourself to take all that strength, that ability to stretch, not just physically, but mentally, from your mat into the rest of your Friday, maybe even the days that follow. One breath all together. Inhale. Exhale. Thank you all so much once again for being here, for taking the time for yourselves and to be with each other as you practice. You're welcome to sit and stay in meditation or move into the rest of your Friday, which I hope is lovely and calm. Thanks, everybody. See you all again soon. Happy Valentine's Day weekend. If that's your thing. If you hate it, I never said it. <laughs> I love it. I'm a sucker for it. <laughs> Amy, Amy. Yeah. Um, that, sorry, I'm getting back. Is that you? It's my computer speaker is garbage. Okay. <laughs> it's the way it's my, it's you hearing my computer speaker. So it's not, it's not okay. your fault. Okay. Um, that when we did the lunge on the back with the block, if you were teaching like super, super, super beginners, would you just teach it without the block or is the block safe to do? Cause that's.